Born in Germany and ordained there in 1904, Schmidt was sent to the United States in 1908 where he was assigned to St. John's Parish in Louisville, Kentucky. There, a rift with another priest resulted in Schmidt's transfer to St. Boniface Church in New York City. There he met beautiful Anna o. Muller, a housekeeper for the rectory who had recently emigrated from Austria. Despite his transfer to a church far uptown, Father Schmidt and Anna continued a romantic affair and, in a secret ceremony he performed himself, they were married. When he discovered she was pregnant, Father Schmidt knew his secret life would soon be exposed. On the night of September 2, 1913, he cut Anna's throat, dismembered her body, and threw the parts into the Hudson River. When the body was discovered, he was arrested and charged with the murder. In addition, German police wanted to talk to Father Schmidt about a murdered girl in his hometown. Though he was never charged, it was strongly suspected that Father Schmidt committed these murders as well. On September 5, 1913, two youths walking along the New Jersey shoreline of the Hudson River stumbled across a package containing the headless trunk of a woman, severed at the waist. The next day, some three miles downriver at Weehawken, a second package was found a pillowcase monogrammed with the letter A, and containing the lower torso of the same woman, wrapped in a newspaper dated August 31st. Despite the fact that both packages had washed ashore in New Jersey, jurisdiction passed to the New York Police Department. This decision was made because both parcels had been weighted down with a large chunk of schist a grayish-green rock rarely found in New Jersey, but very common in Manhattan, leading to the strong presumption that the crime had taken place in New York. A preliminary examination of the body suggested a woman aged under 30, approximately 5 feet 4 inches in height and weighing between 120 and 130 pounds and that she had been in the water a few days at most. An autopsy later revealed that the woman had given birth prematurely not long before she died. Skilled detective work, tracing the manufacturer of the highly distinctive pillowcase, then studying that company's order books, led officers to a Manhattan apartment. The landlord said that the apartment had been rented two weeks earlier by someone called Hans Schmidt, ostensibly for a young female relative. When officers let themselves into the apartment, they spotted blood stains on the wallpaper and floor. Stains that someone had struggled hard to remove, judging from the new scrubbing brush and six cakes of soap that lay by the sink. Inside a trunk they found a foot-long butcher's knife and a large handsaw, both recently cleaned. Another trunk held several small handkerchiefs, all amateurishly embroidered with the same letter, a as on the pillowcase. A bundle of letters addressed to one Anna o. Muller, led to St. Boniface's Church, on 42nd Street where the 21-year-old German immigrant had worked as a servant in the rectory, until being discharged for misconduct. Mention of Schmidt's name brought another lead, Street. Joseph's Church, 405 West 105th Street. Father Hans Schmidt, aged 32 at this time, almost fainted when police officers came to interview him. Just minutes later, racked by remorse, he unburdened his soul with a bizarre tale of having gone through a form of marriage with a Muller, a ceremony conducted by himself for obvious reasons, only to then kill her, excusing himself on the grounds that I love her. 
sacrifices should be consummated in blood. That Schmidt killed Anna Muller was not in doubt when his trial began on December 7, 1913, but his defense team, lead by WMK Olkit, was emphatic that their client had been consumed by a bloodlust and, therefore, was not responsible for his actions. As support for this view they produced Dr. Arnold Leo, who had treated Schmidt and Amuller some months before the tragedy. Leo told the court that at their first meeting Schmidt had initially claimed to be a music teacher, but later admitted that he was a priest. Schmidt told me that he was very much in love with the girl, and that he intended to give up the priesthood and marry her. Leo described how during one of his professional visits to see Schmidt at the rectory, the priest unaccountably became wildly excited, then sprang across the room and grabbed a zither. After playing the instrument for a few minutes he stopped, sat down and began to talk calmly. So far as the prosecution, which knew a great deal about the defendant's shady background, was concerned, Schmidt was a scheming con man, entirely responsible for his actions. The arresting officer, Inspector Joseph A. 4 O, testified that at first Schmidt had denied knowing Anna A. Muller, but had yielded when 4 O said, Come now. Tell us the whole truth about this thing. According to 4 O, Schmidt admitted purchasing the knife and hand saw on August 31st, then creeping into Amuller's bedroom on night of September 2nd, while she lay sleeping, and slashing her throat. Quizzed about the obvious signs of experience in the dissection, Schmidt admitted that he had been a medical student before being ordained. Assistant District Attorney James A. Delacanti wanted the jury to know more about what Foro had discovered about Schmidt's background. Foro detailed the extraordinary career of a priest who often posed as a doctor, in which capacity he had performed illegal abortions, a man who turned his hand to counterfeiting, someone who had aroused concern at several churches across America and yet who has miraculously avoided censure. Clearly Schmidt was peculiar, but was he mad? It would be up to the jury to decide. On February 5, 1914, after just two hours deliberation, they convicted Schmidt of first-degree murder. One week later the disgraced priest was sentenced to death, and after a lengthy appeal process, on February 18, 1916, Father Schmidt was executed in the electric chair at Sing Sing Prison. Thank you for watching Death Row.